How are we doing today? Good. Good? All right. How about the other half of you? How are you doing today? Okay. I think we're all kind of doing good anyway. Uh, we're going to talk about how to live life the way God intended us to live life. And, you know, I know I can't answer that question in uh, half an hour, but maybe I can just give you some thoughts that in this world that we live in. How do we, how do we live this, this wonderful life that Jesus came uh, to, to, to allow us to have, right? So how do we enjoy life? What are just some things we do? Your hobbies, your job, um, vacations, right? Do you live for vacations? Great grandsons, grandchildren, right? All these things, getting together, seeing each other. Um, uh, you, you enjoy life by watching the news? I was just wondering that. <laughs> yes, I doubt that. Grandkids, you know, maybe sports or recreation things. Just things that we love in life, right? Uh, that, that we enjoy and, and just have a great time. And maybe that's how we, we enjoy our life. But maybe there's something greater. Maybe there's more than that. Maybe that's just part of it. We all, all of the things that God has created for us to do and uh, individually how we are and, and how God loves us in that. Um, we're going to play a game. We all like games, right? We're going to have a great game. We've got prizes up here for answers, right? We've got lots of, lots of prizes. i got some questions. We're going to divide the church in half. We don't, don't do that very often. We don't like division in the church, but we do it uh, sometimes for food pantries, uh, uh, just other cool stuff, but we're going to do that today. I think I'll start with this side because I started with that side this morning. So, okay. So we got prizes for the answers. I'm going to ask some questions. We'll start over here. What is the Pentateuch? I know. I, I gave five minutes. Well, I don't hear any answers, so okay. We'll go over here. Hey, what do David, Saul, and Solomon have in common? What is it? They were, oh, yeah, that's right. So, so it was answered over here. If you guys want to get a prize for that, go ahead, even though they answered. Where in the Bible would you read about the life of David? Boy, this, I don't think this side knows anything. I think we'll go over here. God promised the Israelites a land flowing with milk and honey. Get your prize. Let's see if we can even get the answer over here. What? Here's an easy one. Okay, team. What is the name of the biggest river in Egypt? <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know what he's doing. Hi. How are you doing? Okay. Add the missing word. Gold, frankincense, and? Oh, I think the whole, I think the whole side got there. Oh, we don't have enough prizes. You'll have to fight over them. Okay. Is the... Is the book of Revelation about the end or the beginning of the world? It's about both, right? <laughs> cool. Awesome. Okay. Tally up the points. Awesome. Okay. Morgan won. You won. You won the game. You're a loser, Ann. Did you know, I looked up the four major sports, and baseball has 191 pages of rules. Basketball has 113 pages of rules. Football has 96 pages of rules. Hockey has 200 pages of rules. How did you like playing our game with no rules? That was fun to those that got the, the, got the candy, right? What was it like? What did you think? Chaos. chaos is the exact word we got this morning right off the bat. It was chaos, right? Nobody knew what was going on. I think, I think this side was over here. What's going on? They wouldn't even answer the questions, right? <laughs> what is going on here? People are just doing weird things and don't know what's going on. It, doesn't that feel like life today? It's just a bunch of chaos because there just seems to be no rules and no truth and everybody just kind of doing randomly things and getting prizes for something else somebody else does. and It's a crazy mess. But that's not how we were created to be. 
That's not how, not, how, it's not how God made us with all uh, the giftings we have and the beautiful, uh, our beautiful image in him with purpose and life to, to, uh, to live and live life to the fullest. Satan and, and the evil would bring chaos to the world. And we see that more and more. It's more evident every day as we get closer to, to Jesus returning. So life can only be lived to the full with the, the guidelines in, in boundaries in life. We need guidelines. We need boundaries. Otherwise, they're chaos. Now, God basically, you know, the Old Testament's full of, full of uh, laws, right? And the laws that we couldn't keep. Laws that basically showed us that we couldn't keep them. Because it pointed to something greater, and that was Jesus Christ that would come for our sins. And Jesus broke down all the laws in the Old Testament. You know, we talk about the Ten Commandments. He broke them down into two laws. Love God and love others. That's the simple version of living a life that God created you to live. Love God, love others. Worship God alone. Don't have other uh, idols. Live within the boundaries of what God gave us as his created beings, right? Don't become something else. And live a life that God has given you purpose for. A.W. Tozer says this doesn't mean that you'd be happy all the time. He writes these words. The true Christian ideal is not to be happy, but to be holy. And some of you are thinking, holy, holy, holy. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I can't be holy, right? We take that word and we make it way more than, than uh, it should be. And we try to make it way more than it should be because it's God making us holy. When we say yes to him, it's, it's not what we do. It's just saying, Lord, Lord, help me to live a life holy that's set apart, that is pleasing to God by doing what God, God, uh, uh, doing what pleases God. And what is that? Loving him and loving others. Even when they disagree with us. See, we, we, we've got this great divide. We've got this great divide between those who think they're right versus those that think they're right. Right? And then we got God who is right. And, you're, and you just, it's hard to change people's minds. But when you love somebody, when you love someone, even if they don't love you, even if they, they're not, uh, even if they're your enemies, when you love them, you will get the opportunity to speak into their lives how God changed your life. How he got rid of your old life that was full of sin and chaos and, and me and change it around so it was about how can I be beneficial to someone else? How can I love someone else? And that's loving someone else. Not Jesus, you know, people didn't agree with Jesus. They tried to trap him. They tried to uh, falsely accuse him. They tried to do everything. They, they tried to kill him. They succeeded, but it didn't work, right? He still loved him. Still loved him. And if we could just learn to uh, come down to those, those two, two commands, those two laws, those two guidelines for us to live a life that is, that is uh, abundant, to love God. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then look at others and say, man, how can I, I'm going to love on this person. How can I slow down enough to hear their struggles? How can I hear their, their pains, what they're going through? Sometimes I got to slow down enough to remember what it was like as a parent with small kids. Because I'm not in that stage right now, right? I've moved on to another stage. And, uh, you, know, ki you know, kids, parents with, with kids, and they're, they're struggling, and they're trying to do this and that. So uh, what's the big deal, right? Because <laughs> I'm not there. I got to stop and say, oh, yeah, that was a big deal. Cindy's running one kid over here, and I'm running another over here. And the third one we've left behind. 
We don't know where he is. Hope he shows up somewhere. Hope he's still there when we get home. Okay, I, I, you know, we, we all get in our own, own places in life, and we just got to remember that, uh, yeah, maybe I've been through that. Maybe I can slow down enough and, and, and love on them to help them. So where, where are we in that life? Isaiah 45, 18 says these words. For the Lord is God, and he created the heavens and the earth and put everything in place. He made, he made the world to be lived in, not a place of empty chaos. I am the Lord, there's no other. So he created this beautiful creation and created us to live in it for, with purpose, a place to be lived in. Psalm 115, 16 says, The heavens belong to the Lord, but he has given the earth to all humanity. So he created this especially for you. He created it for you to live in and have life and have purpose. How many feel like you're, you're having a super abundant life? Yeah, very few hands, right? Because we just don't feel that way, right? But Jesus said, came and said, I came to give you life. I came to give you life in the full, which, which is meat, super abundant, better than, better than just the normal. That's what he came. Um, uh, let's read John 10. Verses 1 through 10. Jesus says these words. I tell you the truth that anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And after he gathered his flock, he walks ahead of him, and they follow because they know his voice. That's talking about Jesus is, is, is the shepherd, and in, in, in the sheep, us who have put their trust in him, know his voice. We know when he talks, and we understand when he's, when he's talking, okay, this is the voice I need to listen to. And it goes on and says, verse 5, that, that we won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. And those who heard Jesus in this illustration didn't understand what he meant, and he explained to them, I tell you the truth, I am the gate. I am the gate for the sheep, and all who come before me, all who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. What do thieves and robbers do? They steal, they take what is yours for themselves, right? Right? The enemy would like to come in and steal your joy, steal your life, steal anything that's beneficial to you and your family and wants it to take it from you, right? They give you a life, but it's missing all the things that, that God has given you to have real life. Thieves and robbers don't care about you. It's greed and power and selfishness. Where God is the exact opposite, right? Right? He blesses, he wants to bless you, wants you, wants to give you, uh, he's giving you so much. Look in your life, what he's given to you. Beautiful day outside, right? Let's not take it for granted, it was created by God. For you and I today, just like that zero degree weather in January with the wind blowing. Let's give him glory in all things, right? Say praise him. Verse 9 says, yes, I am the gate, and those who come through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and find good pastures. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus says, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. So Satan wants to take from you what is yours, your life. He wants to kill life. And destroy your life, ruin it. As we see here, as, as, as we come to put our trust in Jesus, first of all, we get that, that salvation, right? I am saved. And from that, as we, as we read his word, as we pray, as we gather in church, as we listen to each other, we learn uh, how God speaks. We hear that voice and it changes us. And as we hear that voice and as we listen to that voice and when we are obedient to that voice, we are transformed. And we crucify what we used to do on the cross so that we are a new 
creation in Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit to live the life God intended for you and I to have, loving God and loving others. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life, which means super abundant, superior, exceedingly abundant, more and more good life. So often I think the world hears the do's and don'ts of the church. Oh, you can't do this and you can't do that. And you, you know, don't do this and you're supposed to do that. And you just hear, boring, I don't want to be any part of the church. Maybe the message should be, what do we believe in? What do, what can we do? And that's to love those around us. That's to love God. That's to uh, uh, love those around us in such a way that say, hey, it's not about do's and don'ts. It's about living a life that's healthy and beneficial to me and to my family and to the world. The, uh, as we talked about last week, uh, love, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Right? All those things. As you, as you love on somebody, there's no one that doesn't enjoy being loved on in those areas. The Wesleyan Church uh, had their general conference here just a couple weeks ago, and, and just a few things that they talked about and affirmed what they support, not about do's and don'ts, and you can't do this and you can't do that. But they said these words. They stood and said, we, we affirm that persons of all races are created equal in the image of God and are entitled to equal justice under the law. In Christ, there is no black, white, green, yellow, whatever. We are one. God created all people. He loves all people. Remember that. The world brings division. The world uses race bait, baiting all the time. Just look at the headlines on the news in the newspaper. Our TV died a couple weeks ago, so I got rid of all of our stuff. But I don't see the news much anymore, so I'm a happier person. Right? Right? All races are created equal. Number two, to affirm the Wesleyan Church, to affirm that the sanctity of life and all that is life is sacred from conception to death. Life is precious because God is life. Jesus is life. No matter where we are in that, that process of living, you are precious. We stand for life. The third thing they said is we affirm that God's only design for marriage is between one, one man and one woman. Because anything outside of that destroys. It hurts. Whether you see it or not. It's the, it's the consequences, right? Or you, you reap what you sow. You may not see it now, but you'll see it later. In all these things, it's just for your benefit. God's design for you God's design for, for the humans he created. Stay within these, these boundaries. And, you know, we get hung up, the older laws or whatever do. No, it's for your benefits. Don't let your kid play in the, in the, in the middle of the street. I mean, it's obvious. It's obvious. And when, when we can see him that way, we understand how great God's law, love is for us. I've been talking on the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew Matthew 5 and, and uh, Wednesday night with our kind of tweeners group. And it talks, Jesus sits down and just starts talking. And he talks about how to live life. And he talks about anger. And he talks about uh, adultery. And he talks about divorce. And he talks about vows and, and revenge and, and love for our enemies. He talks about giving. He talks about judging and not judging and how to do that right. He talks about pr prayer and fasting. He talks about money and possessions. And how they uh, should be in your life. And he talks about how to get to heaven. He talks how to be aware of deception that is all around us. He talks about uh, true disciples will, will do the will of the Father, will do what pleases God. He talks about how you build a, a solid foundation through, through his word in Jesus Christ. He talks about the golden rule. Matthew seven twelve. 
At the end, he says, do to others what you would have them to do to you. And this is the essence of all that is taught in the laws of the prophets. Do to others. It includes your enemies. It includes those that don't like you. Because you think... We've got those people who think they're right versus those people who think they're right, <laughs> right? Well, there's some truth in there somewhere, right? But often we let ourselves feel more superior because we know we're right, or at least we think we're right. And therefore we're looking down on another person who is God's creation, right? I am right. They're so wrong. When are they going to get it? In fact, we should just kind of be listening and say, How do you, why do you feel that way? I, I, ask some questions. Get to know them. Because their life is not your life. They weren't brought up the same way you were brought up. Good, bad, ugly, right? We're all different. But we have one core truth, and that's, that's, that's God in his truths. So how can we speak in their lives and love them enough, even in the hard times, even in the tensions, even with the struggles, to care about someone enough to love them. G.K. Chesterton said these words, the Bible tells us to love our neighbors and also to love our enemies, probably because they are generally the same people. Maybe. People we interact with often. There's a verse that was brought up this week as I was talking to another pastor friend of mine out of Matthew 24 and in, in Jesus talking about the end times. It says these words, Sin will be rampant everywhere and the love of many will grow cold, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. This, this beginning here, sin will be rampant everywhere. It basically means that sin will multiply. Okay, it's not adding on a sin here and adding on a sin here. The world comes up with a different sin. But it's multiplying. And when you start to multiply, things get, get bigger, right? The number gets bigger pretty quick. You can see that in today's world, right? Right? And, 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 and it says, because of that, the, the love and there will be... There'll be There'll be sin everywhere. It'll be multiplying. You, you, you'll just see it. And the love of many will grow cold. And, and the King James Version says the love of many will wax cold, right? And, and if you've ever done any canning and you, got, you heat the wax up and it's liquefied and you put it on top of the jar to seal the jar and you put the lid on, what happens to that wax? Slowly hardens, right? Right. And that's, that's what it's talking about here about, about your love, Right? Don't let your love wax hard. Don't, get, don't let it be hard. It's so easy to make, let that happen, right? This last couple of years of COVID, you know, people have been fearful. People have been, um, uh, they, they don't want to get together. They're still afraid. And now if you want to talk to someone anyways, you're, you, you don't want to talk to them because you might offend them because that's been going on for years now. So you've got, you've got this great, it's like the perfect ugly storm is hitting us all. That we've been separated, we've been fearful, we, we, we don't want to say anything, we don't even want to say the truth, right? Because we just can't handle it anymore. We're tired of it. So we kind of just go off into our own little worlds. And our love starts to wax cold. I challenge you not, not to let that happen. It says, it says, but the one who endures to the end will be saved because God called us to love. Don't stop. Fight through it. I find in myself, I've got to fight through at times. There's times I just want to go home and get in my recliner and just sit there <laughs> Lord, come! <laughs> what, was that? what was that show? 
Sam, Sanford and Sons? I'm coming, Lord. That's older than most of you. So, <laughs> right? Have you have you felt that way? Right? Oh, press on, press on. Romans chapter one talks about those those that have said there is no God and God hands them over to do what they want to do and the, it goes on and talks about all the evil they do and it, and it talks about them inventing more evil. They make more evil and that's the world we're in today where it's just multiplying. You just you pick up you know what news you pick up your phone for a second you say oh there's, there's something new I never knew just some kind of sin. So so I, I encourage you to press on loving as the team comes up we get get ready here the first is make sure that you love God first because if you don't love God first it, it's not it doesn't work <laughs> right make sure you're loving God more and more make sure you're taking time just talk to him the second is make sure you love yourself because you guys are, and girls are just beautiful people. Designed by God in a beautiful way with a purpose. And he's given you everything you need to do to, to, to do that purpose. And if you don't have it yet, when you step out of the box to do it, he'll give you what you need. And the third thing is just love on others. Take time to stop and listen right? I mean, ultimately, God's the final judge. We don't need to be judging all that much. Talks in the Beatitudes of the, you know, the same degree you judge, you'll be judged. So be very careful on that. But love others is a, is a no-brainer. And I'll end with this. John three sixteen and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave. Right? So God so loved the world that he gave. That's not just you. That's everybody. That's your enemies. That's people that don't like you. It's people you don't like. God loved the world. He gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him, whoever trusts in him will not perish but have eternal life. Verse 17. God sent his son Jesus into the world not to judge the world but to save the world through him. Right? So can we work on our, our love game? Can we slow down enough? And maybe it, start, it starts with God, ourselves, and just spread it, spread it around.